Do you want bulletproof knees so that you can move freely through a full range of motion without pain or risking injury to yourself? I feel like the logical answer is yes. It makes total sense to prioritize knee health because our knees are actually one of the most vulnerable joints in the body. In this video, I'm going to show you why the knees are a little bit vulnerable and the four best exercises to give them their own bulletproof vest. Did you know that 41% of sporting injuries occur in the knee, which is a huge majority. And if we think about it anatomically, it's kind of understandable too. Joints are obviously weaker than bones, so we don't really get injuries mid-bone, such as in the femur or in the tibia, unless there's really significant trauma. It tends to be therefore the joints that take the flack from less dramatic scenarios or repeated stresses. But why the knees more so than any other joint? Well, it's a little bit like process of elimination because our hip joint is super strong. It's engulfed by the largest muscles in the body, the glutes, and the bones sit deep inside one another, a really deep ball and socket joint. So with our entire body weight bearing down upon us, if we find ourselves in a compromised position, this joint is super strong and stable, supported by muscles and bony anatomy. And then this joint has evolved over millions of years to be capable of supporting our body weight with bones which slot together a little bit like Tetris. So what's left to take the stress? Our poor knees. They take the brunt of lower body injuries because simply they're the least anatomically stable. Plus you have your entire body weight bearing down through them, something that a joint such as the shoulder doesn't have the disadvantage of. So what does bulletproofing your knees actually consist of? Well, it's a little bit of a gimmicky phrase, as correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think anyone is holding a gun to your knees, but it's about building strength and resilience to give us the best chance of avoiding injury whilst we do all the things that we enjoy doing with our bodies. So let's jump in with the first exercise, but of all of these movements, if there's any that you actually implement, let it be number four. So first up, we've got the king of knee strengthening exercises. This movement builds strength in your VMO, which stands for vastus medialis oblique. The VMO is one of your quad muscles. Quad meaning there's four parts of the muscle, and this little fella is one that often gets left out in many other leg strengthening exercises. It sits right here on the medial aspect of the thigh and runs kind of diagonally, hence its name medialis oblique. This muscle helps stabilize the knee joint, particularly in controlling how the kneecap moves in relation to the knee. So for this one, you need to stand on an elevated surface with your heel slightly raised. Maybe that's with a slant board or wedge like this, but a book or a weight plate underneath your heel works just as well. You don't want to be too high up. Around six inches is great, as the higher you are, the harder it becomes. So stand yourself on your surface, heel raised, and from here, you're going to lower down to tap your heel to the ground. Aim to have your heel to be about in line with the toes of your standing leg. You then press back up to stand and that's one rep. Make sure your knee is moving in line with the second toe of this working leg and avoid sinking into the hips like this. Focus on keeping your pelvis level and placing your hands on your hips can give you good visual feedback to ensure that you're doing this. This is called a Poliquin step up, created by Charles Poliquin, who figured that pain in the knee is often due to an imbalance of strength between the outer and the inner knee. And this exercise addresses that common imbalance. I'm always asked how many reps and how many sets should I do? That's going to be different for everyone. But a nice rule of thumb is to start with eight to 12 repetitions, repeat it for three sets. So the next one might surprise you a little as it's not a strengthening exercise, it's a stretch, which for some of you may actually be even more valuable because tight quads are a leading cause of knee pain. Your patella or your kneecap sits within the quadricep tendon. So the tendon is the tough bit of connective tissue which attaches a muscle to a bone. So in the case of your knee, it's the tendon that attaches your quads to your shin bone so that when your quads contract, your knee straightens. The patella sits within this tendon. So if your quads are tight, it can cause misalignment of your kneecap or simply change the way that forces travel through the knee and this can cause you pain. I love to use an exercise bench for this one where you place your knee on the seat cushion so that your shin runs up the backrest. That way you can adjust the intensity of the stretch by taking a different level with the backrest. 
Most importantly, once you have your shin in position, is to then slightly tuck your tailbone under, bringing the pelvis into a slight posterior tilt. This will put the quads in their longest position, so be prepared for this to really intensify the stretch. Press the hips ever so slightly forward, and if you really want to go for it, lightly press your shin into the bench for an isometric stretch. I'll explain what an isometric stretch is and why it's so great in another video, so don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. Hold your stretch for 30 seconds and then repeat on the other leg. You get a gold star if you then repeat each stretch twice more on each leg. That would be an amazing way to improve your flexibility here. So the third exercise can feel a little bit rogue. We know the knee as an anterior structure. So working with the muscles on the anterior part of the leg kind of makes sense to us. But this exercise number three is for your hamstrings. So let me explain why it has a place here. Most knee issues occur when the knee moves into flexion. That being, the more it bends, the more problematic it becomes. Bulletproofing your knees is all about building strength and resilience in the muscles that surround the knee joint. So the fact that the hamstring crosses the knee joint and is the primary muscle involved in bending the knee it makes logical sense that stronger hamstrings are beneficial for knee health. This is a very specific exercise that I recommend and I'll tell you why. Hamstring curls are great for strengthening the hamstrings, but doing so with a dumbbell between the feet like this has most of the tension when the leg is in the more straight position in this portion of the movement, which is great, but it's less specific for building strength in knee flexion which, as I mentioned, is generally the more problematic and vulnerable position of the knee. So instead, try them with a resistance band. Hook the band around your ankles, and as you curl your heel towards your bum, the tension in the band increases, meaning the tension increases as you move into that all-important knee flexion range of motion. A seated hamstring curl machine at the gym is also a great option. Again, a good ballpoint to aim for here is 8 to 12 repetitions. Repeat that for three sets. So the fourth and final exercise actually has nothing to do with the knee. It's targeting muscles that don't even cross the knee joint. So why the hell is it in this video? As I mentioned previously, the knee is kind of vulnerable because, well, the ankle finds stability through its bony structure and the grounding against the floor. And the hip is surrounded by the body's largest muscles for support. But when it comes to the hip, these hugely strong muscles can actually be a little bit of a double-edged sword. Sure, it's great that the hip is less vulnerable to injury, but if we lack mobility in our hips and then find ourselves in a compromising situation, whether that be through a sport we're playing or just living your daily life, because accidents happen, because the hip is so damn stiff, that compromising force, whatever it might be, goes straight down to the next available mobile spot, which is your knee. So more mobile hips are a great tool for injury prevention, allowing these big strong muscles to support us through whatever compromising position we might find ourselves in, instead of passing that stress along to the weaker neighbor down at the knee. So for this one, sit yourself on the floor, bend your knees to about 90 degrees, your feet to be a little wider than your hips. From there, let the legs fall all the way off to one side and then lean your body weight over your leaning leg until you feel a stretch into your outer bum muscle. From there, for six seconds, drive this whole leg down into the floor and then pause and relax for two to three seconds. Within that pause and relaxed phase, see if you can move a little bit further over the leg. Repeat that contract and then relax for about three or four times through. After your final round of effort, allow yourself to stay in your deepest version of the stretch for about 20 seconds and then don't forget to go do the other leg. Improving your mobility in general is the best tool for injury prevention in the long run. So go and check out this video next to learn the four best mobility exercises to bulletproof your entire body.